Hi, I'm Cameron, and I don't just read comics, I love them. Welcome back to another episode of Cameron Reads Comics. Today, we're going to be talking about a mini series that was supposed to be an ongoing, but didn't quite get there. We're talking about Dan Slott and Andrea DeVito's The Thing, issues one through eight. So, here we go. Uh, first and foremost, I need to let you guys know that The Thing is my favorite Marvel character. I think... Ben Grimm is the heart of the Marvel Universe. As you guys will get to find out, I'm a, I'm a huge Fantastic Four fan. So, and I'm currently reading Dan Slott's Fantastic Four run, and it is just wonderful. It's, it's giving me all these feelings that I needed. I liked Dan Slott's Spider-Man. I'm currently on my way working through Dan Slott's She-Hulk run. And so, when I saw this... Uh, character staring me in the face, especially while I'm reading these titles that, you know, he's worked on that kind of intertwine with this character and my favorite character in the Marvel Universe. I was like, this is something I need to read. When it comes to accessibility, um, you don't need to know anything about the thing before you read this. You know, basically all you need to know is the fundamentals. Uh, he's a member of the Fantastic Four. He's dating Alicia Masters, daughter of a supervillain who's blind, the puppet master. Um, that's a that's about as much as I knew going into it because as much as I love the Fantastic Four, I'm kind of a surface level fan. And so getting into this story, I think it's 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 very accessible for new readers. I don't think anyone should be intimidated going into this series. Uh, in this series, Ben Grimm doesn't live with the Fantastic Four or even in the Baxter buildings. He actually has been given a percentage of uh, Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four. It's like patents on their inventions so he is loaded they reads the super genius he invents things obviously as you know and so he gives his best friend a percentage of those profits and you know it just gives ben all the money in the world um and so he actually lives in a high rise lives in a palace as we meet him he's currently broken up with alicia but he starts dating uh, a movie star and that kind of that, that's all you need to know. The thing I like about this series is that it explores Ben Grimm's relationship with Yancey Street, uh, his Jewish upbringing, and among other places, like he is the heart of the Marvel Universe. And so we get to, to experience his character interacting with all these other characters in the universe, which is super special and, you know, fun for us. Uh, I like I like him interacting with everyone else. And if you're a fan of that kind of stuff, he did a long, long, long run in the 70s called Marvel 2-in-1 where it was pretty much, let's team up the thing with so many other people in the Marvel Universe. And let's see how he interacts with Spider-Man and Iron Man and She-Hulk and you know Doctor Strange and whatever. And so this title kind of brings back a lot of those feelings about that character. And I don't think there's a character who more in the Marvel universe right now deserves a solo title. There's, there's guaranteed Spider-Man's obviously going to have a solo title, but I'm talking about, you know, B list characters that should just always have their own book. I think there should either be a thing solo title or a Marvel two in one being published in, at Marvel at all times. This story takes place. It's just cool. I like it because it takes place in the larger Marvel universe. It's its own thing. And he is doing his, his own adventures, but his interactions with those characters is kind of what makes this book what it is. And I love that because he is such a fun character to watch interact in this larger, fantastic universe. Um, and that brings me to why I'm so drawn to this title in particular. It is just some feel good comics. It's not dark and brooding. It's not daredevil where you want to have to take a drink after it's not Batman where you know, he's the stakes of Gotham are going, you know, they're going to burn to the ground or whatever. Now, this is just, this is like the thing in the first arc he does is like against arcade. You know, it's uh, then it, then he bounces around. I think there's a full issue he does with Spider-Man. And that's the kind of stuff that I want to be seeing in in my Marvel. The thing issues. Sometimes I just want feel good, fun, consistent comic books. And this is a series that gives me that. The book is really good, but it's not perfect. So for one of the cons, I'd say this, the thing isn't with Alicia Masters. So I think she, their relationship is one of the most fundamental parts about the, you know, broader Marvel universe. And so, um, 
it's th- that them not being together and him being with some like kind of vain movie star which is kind of a weird choice for the character and like you know Dan Dan Slott just he takes the pieces he was given and so he can he can do that and frankly I guess it's kind of consistent with what he did with the Spider-Man and Mary Jane but that's besides the point um the second thing that I think really bums me out about this was uh this story isn't quite an ongoing title it's not like a mini series either. It was a title that was supposed to be ongoing, but then got canceled after eight issues. Now I listened to an interview with Dan Slott and he was saying that <clears throat> this story was coming out at the same time as house of M and civil war and really like this golden age of Marvel comics being released. And so that being the case, this title, while it is good and while it is a good quality title, it is so, you know, Frankly, it's just not as good as those. And it's that's a hard thing to say because there's so many comics being published currently and even these days, like by Marvel, none of them are as good. I don't think any of them could have held a candle to those kinds of big things happening in the universe. You know, we're still talking about House of M. Um, and that being the case, I think uh, it's pretty it, it it's it bums me out that we couldn't have had more of that series due to, you know, it's it's time and place at Marvel. Because I think if this series was coming out now, we'd have a completely different story. And I think we'd have a completely different opinion on it. So, yeah, that's it's kind of sad. And I just wanted to put, put a note in that. Um, but, luckily enough, now we have a new The Thing series being launched at Marvel. So I think you can go pick up the first issue now. And if, it's late, if you're listening to this in the future, hey, future people, maybe you want to go pick up the trade paperback of that. Um, so... Winding down, I think I, I talked about the writing. I want to talk about the art. Uh, Andrea DeVito is the artist on this book, and I think the thing is a very challenging character. It's very he, he, he obviously a lot of characters range in their portrayal among artists. I think that if I was to ever get like one character commissioned by any artist, you know, go to a different artist and get the same character every time I would get the thing because I think he's so up for interpretation and there's so many different looks that people have for him. And so I, I, I really want to applaud Andrea DeVito because this, he, he is a wonderful artist who is number one. So consistent. How often do we actually get a book now that if it's an eight issue series is on for all eight issues. And that's what happened in this one. So major props to Andre DeVito. Um, this is actually the first book that I read, uh, by this artist. And so, um, I thought it was really, it was really good. It was just like, a, you know, the, the, the art didn't like, you know, floor me, but I found it to be so just like pleasant and perfect. And like, there's times when, the art doesn't match the tone of the book. And this is not one of those times. I thought the art matched it perfectly. So big props to Andrea DeVito. I, I actually, I love that that was the artist on this book. I, you know, it wouldn't cool to have, you know, Alex Ross, but I thought this artist did just wonderful. And I, I think the tone tonally and everything, I don't even think Alex Ross could have fit the tone of this book. I think this artist did it perfectly. So big props to the art. Um, and the the thing is just he looked good he felt good and like in the art it's cool to find the tone and the heart of that character and i saw that in andre davido's art so now we're at the rating part of our video i'm going to give this book out of 10 stars i'm probably going to give it let's say a solid uh 7.5 stars i really like this book i think more people should read it i actually wish it was still an ongoing title and i guess me knocking it a couple points would just be that like the last issue was really good, but we didn't get a chance to wrap it all up, you know, and it felt rushed because it was canceled. And so, um, I really wish that we could have spent more time with these characters. And so it, it was good while we had them and, and, but it can be even better if we got some longer time. So um, I think I'm going to go pick up that new thing series, uh, right now. So, all right. Remember I'm Cameron. I don't just read comics. I love them. Make sure to clobber those like and subscribe buttons. See you next time.